In this video, we're going to take a look at the topology of a wide body for an AMG Mercedes. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some wide body fenders that I designed for this AMG Mercedes. Now, I had originally recorded everything, and I was going to do a speed through model, taking a look at the process. But unfortunately, the last video was lost, so it's it's not all there. So I figured what I do instead is just take a look at the geometry. We can better understand exactly how it was made, how we worked on following the lines of the car, and just get a better idea of what the topology looks like on a form body for this. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hide everything except for the fender flares. So I'm going to hide the wheels. We go into bodies, I'm going to hide the car body itself, and we're going to take a look at the fenders. So when we do this, you'll notice that they wrap around the front bumper. They do have some creasing. You can see that I tried to follow the body lines. And at the very top, you can see that there's some creasing here and the same thing in the back. Now, one of the challenges in the back was actually following the creasing on the door because in the car, it actually disappears. So let's go ahead and hop into our form. And to do this, I'm actually going to go ahead and hide all of these solid bodies as well. So I don't have any ghost images. We're going to go ahead and edit. And now we can see the topology. So when we do this, uh, there's a lot on the screen. So I'm going to focus on one body at a time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front first. In box display mode, you can see that we followed the same general process that we have before. The flow of edges that goes around the wheel arch is fairly consistent. You can see that we're, we're following this edge as it goes up and around. And what this allows us to do is build out the shape of the flare, and then it can sort of follow the lines of the hard crease on the car. And in areas where we had a hard crease on the body, you can see that I've got support edges. And if I want that to fade away in the wheel arch, you can see that I've sort of widened them here, but they're tighter here. Same thing up here, you can see that I followed the crease that comes off the headlight, and this typically would not be a creased area on the car. If we bring back the mesh body and we hide our form body, you can kind of see how the car is smooth there. It wraps around this opening, but what I really wanted to do was try to carry some of those creases up and over the car, and I wanted to give it a little bit more of a, a sharp and aggressive look. So. The crease that follows the headline, this is probably a good shot here. Uh, once again, you can see that on the car, we've got this crease that goes on the headline and ultimately that carries along the door and disappears into the rear quarter. You can see what I did was again, I added some support loops. So I've got these three edges. You can see two of them are really close together. One's a little bit more spread out. And when we look at that in smooth display and I hide the edges, you can see that that gives me a really tight crease, probably tighter than it needs to be, but I wanted to exaggerate this. So having those edges really close together gives me that effect. And one thing you can see is that it ends up putting one single crease right in the mid, and then we've got a wider one apart here, and then we've got a closer one here. And if we look back at the box display, you can see that's true as well. Another thing you'll notice is this is an area where I chose to have a T-point, but because of the way that this is actually coming back, it's converted to a star point. Now, the reason for this is because when that edge disappears into this tight corner, if we carry it through here, it's going to produce some surface issues. So you have to sort of play around with those little details and figure out where that works. And the last thing on the back edge of this, you can see that I added this vertical support. I didn't necessarily need to create a star point here. We could have potentially done uh, completely without this. But one thing that it allows me to do is it allows me to flare the the fender back in so it's kind of it's going to be kind of hard to see but it allows me to sort of maintain this little lip right here by being able to pull part of that back and again you can see that there is a mild crease here and again i'm just trying to follow the lines of the car so if we look at the car itself you can see there is a crease that carries back and even though this is an over fender and i left the back open that crease on the door carries back and this one here carries forward. So when we look at it from the side, you can see that we've got an added crease. It wasn't there on the original. We've, we're carrying a slight crease from this bottom corner. And again, just trying to carry those body lines up. 
And then we're carrying the crease from the headlight all the way back and following the lines of the body. The, this car in general, it was kind of a good candidate for this because the body does bump in so drastically. We could have tucked this up closer to the body, but ultimately it, I thought it was a good idea to keep it spaced out a bit. Now let's take a look at the rear because the rear follows that sort of um, same process. So when we look at the rear, again, the door creases disappear into the, the factory quarter, but because we were making a flare, I thought it was a good idea to sort of carry that further all the way back to the taillight. So sort of extending that crease, even though on the actual car, it disappears. So you can see on the actual car, it sort of blends into the fender. So what I did was I carried that, and if I hide the edges, you can, uh, you can see that the edge, again on the car, drops down and away, but what I did was I repositioned it so that it went up and over. And then I carried the door crease, the lower one, up and into the fender and sort of made it blend away. So when we look at something like this, you have to think long and hard about the direction of curvature. So again, we've got the headlight. You can see that the, uh, the headlight is sort of creasing back, but then we're bumping it out. So in reality, if this wasn't a headlight and it was part of the body, it would be nice to carry that curve out. We didn't really have that option. So I took the route of just sort of bumping it out, but, but following that line. In the back, it's a little bit easier because it's the door, it's the body. So you can see that we are able to just transition and change direction. So from some directions, it's gonna look a bit different, but we're, we're taking this line, which typically drops down, and, it, and we're just sort of changing the direction. Now, in reality, if I was gonna do something like this for this car, what I would probably do is I might actually make an entire door panel piece. So uh, taking the lines, uh, like these lines that are sort of converging and disappearing, I might bring this over fender because it already needs to be cut for the door, bring it further forward. And then where this line is sort of starting to drop back, I would just carry it almost straight back. I would just follow it straight back. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of some of the things that Mercedes does in terms of their shapes, but the shape of this car uh, is pretty nice. I like the sedan and uh, I like the way that they use these hard lines on the hood and in, in several areas. So that's why I wanted to incorporate those into the fender flares. So if you're thinking about a design like this, again, some of the things that you really need to be mindful of is going to be the flow of your edges. So you can see here on the rear, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the mesh body. And on the rear, again, we follow that sort of same process. We're carrying those edge loops, we're controlling the geometry where we need it. You can see here, I started to flare it out a bit more. And the main reason for this is again, because we want to control that shape. I wanted to have this flare out so it looked more like a, uh, a traditional sort of fender flare. You can see there, it's got sort of that rounded bulge shape. But then I also wanted to incorporate those harder edges and sort of the design language that Mercedes uses on these. So these harder edges that sort of dip into the door so it's almost like it's two different sets of flares. We've got the wheel arch flare, and then we're sort of carrying out the rest of the body as well to, to meet that. So again, I, I had intended for this to be more of a speed through where we were actually looking at the modeling process. It unfortunately didn't work out just because the, the video was lost, but I thought I at least would go through and show the process so that way you could see it. So the last thing for this is I ended up thickening them. So these are actually solid bodies. So if we isolate this, um, it does uh, it does have a bit of thickness to it. So you can see that it, it does carry thickness around the wheel arch and, and here. So um, that is one thing that you can do because we do end up with surfaces. You can just simply thicken them into solids as long as the curvature is okay. So again, I thought this looked pretty cool carrying the lines of the car and these over fenders, sort of um, flaring it out, changing the direction in the back, but really looking at keeping the design language that Mercedes uses on these cars. So really playing around with these creases to define the lines and then working in some of those softer lines there. So if you have any questions on this process or 
you know, how I went about it. We've, we've covered this in other videos before. We used mesh data to create the MR2 over fender. We did a couple different ones. So the process is the same. It just comes down to the shape of the car and the type of geometry or lines that you want to create. And unfortunately, I can't share this model uh, simply because of the, the source I got the Mercedes from. I'm just not able to share it. So um, if you have a mesh car and you want to see something like this and you do have a model that we can share, then please let me know. I'm happy to do some additional ones. I like doing this kind of concept design work. It's always fun to change the, the look of a car. But if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.